Well, folks, Scott Sager with you here again. Uh, of course, this is Legal Minute with Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins, LLP, out of Rochester. We had uh, some great segments for you in the past. We've got a new one, and we've got one of the managing partners here. Ted, you've got a new subject today that we're going to talk about, one that I'm a little, uh, I would say, ignorant of, so I'm going to learn something today. Well, let's hope you do, and okay. our listeners do as well. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about probate. Probate. Probate is a topic that uh, has gotten a little bit of publicity. It's kind of interesting because one of the activities at the state bar that I'm involved in, I'm incoming chair of the probate trust and real property section, which is the second largest section of lawyers in the state bar association. Wow. And so next year I'll be chairing that. Uh, but And that gives me a reason to want to be sure that people understand what sure. probate is. Sure. It's... It's one of those words that when you hear it, you kind of shy away from because it means something litigious and, and you don't want to be involved in it. But let's get down to the brass of, of what really is probate. Well, probate really is the promise that the government made to say, we're going to give you a system where you can have a court review and supervise the transfer of your assets from uh, a decedent to their beneficiaries. Okay. It's the one with the court involved. Okay. And that's basically all it means is that the court sits there as a ready arbiter mm -hmm. to help the family make decisions. Okay. Non-probate happens outside of the court system. Mm -hmm. So you can have non-probate assets. A uh, joint checking account is a non-probate asset. Okay. A life insurance policy is a non-probate asset. You put your beneficiary on and at the time of your death, your beneficiary, after filing a few forms, normally gets their their money okay but not everything fits into that category gotcha. and the probate system has been around for hundreds of years okay for the purpose of helping you transfer your assets okay. now probably 30 or 40 years ago shortly after i started practicing mm -hmm. uh, people started talking about oh you need to avoid probate there was a best-selling book written on how to avoid probate okay and that was brought up, as a lot of ideas are, by people who had something to sell. Mm -hmm. Handling probate is considered the practice of law. If you're going to go to the court system, you need to really have a lawyer involved. Sure. And a lot of people would prefer not to use a lawyer. Right. And sometimes that's a good reason. Sometimes it's simply because others have helped intimidate you mm -hmm. so that you want to stay away from a lawyer. Mm -hmm. the, uh, there was another aspect to the probate, and that is that when you, uh, when you make a trust, mm -hmm. when you draft a trust or make a trust, you don't have to be a lawyer. Bankers do trusts, okay. insurance agents do trusts, other people do trusts, but most people would go to see their lawyer to have a trust done. Mm -hmm. But if you're a trust salesman and you can help to get people to stay away from their lawyers, right. then you've got a better opportunity to, uh, to take advantage of that opportunity, get the sale yourself, not have the client go and see a lawyer. I see. Oftentimes, some, well, many of those trusts are perfectly fine. Uh -huh. You go see your banker, you go see a trust company, and it's perfectly fine. Some of them are uh, frauds, some of them are uh, unfairly designed to lead you into making some bad investments. Okay. Uh, many of them are the unauthorized practice of law because of the fact that people stick their foot in and then mm -hmm. they dive in entirely. Right. So probate has uh, gotten a bit of a bad name, yeah. mostly because of the, of the salespeople for trust programs. Yeah. Well, we know this is a capital society and it is. you want to be able to make your money and, and there are some times that it's... Uh, <laughs> Well, you might look a little harder just to make sure that it's on the up and up and on the level. Right. Now, when I'm dealing with an attorney such as yourself, mm -hmm. it's on the level from beginning to end. There's not a big sales pitch. You are here to help facilitate that based on your knowledge that's, and experience. That's generally correct. I won't say that uh, there's never been a problem with a lawyer in the state. Sure, there certainly. obviously are. I've been on the... Uh, legal ethics committee for a number of years, and I know that occasionally we'll have problems with what the lawyers do as well. But, um, you know, if you come to see uh, one of our attorneys, we promise that we won't be uh, taking advantage of you. Yeah. And if you talk to somebody who's been here, they'll probably tell you that 
we perceive trusts as being one tool mm -hmm. in a pretty good tool bag. Yes. Sometimes it fits, sometimes it doesn't. Yes. You know, we're not the kid with a hammer and so everything looks like a nail. <laughs> right. Where if, you, if all you can sell are trusts, yes. you may have that uh, prospect. So not only in coming to an attorney versus um, some other routes I might take, a trust route or others, mm -hmm. one of the things I can get from you is perspective on what else is available or what might be a better avenue to take. That's right. Okay. Yeah, the, it could be a trust. It could be uh, we, we do an awful lot of uh, transfer on death deeds now, okay. which are a relatively new uh, uh, crea creation in the state of Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows people to transfer their property. Again, it's a non-probate transfer. It's mm -hmm. much like a joint checking account or savings account. But the lawyer will also tell you what the downside of those yes. things are. We've seen situations where a person will have a joint account with the person, and the second person gets themselves into some tax problems mm -hmm. or get a judgment against them, and all of a sudden, all of that money goes to the person that nobody intended to take it, Right but it's available to them so they can uh, have it taken away from okay. from the owner. So Now, to, again, I'm fairly ignorant on the subject, mm -hmm. but if we're talking about um, preparations for the future, we talked with Andy about estate planning in general. Right. He talked a little bit about wills and, de and other uh, decrees that you can have as far as where your assets may go. Sure. Mm -hmm. Probate is involved in that with the asset planning or estate planning, or is it a separate entity altogether? Well, generally, probate is the second chapter. Okay. You plan, and and you think, when I die, mm -hmm. something needs to happen. Probate kicks in at the moment of death and says, okay, here's the process for handling your assets mm -hmm. from the moment of your death through an orderly procedure mm -hmm. to get it to the people you wanted it to go to. Okay. If you make no plans, probate tells you what the legislature decided yeah. that uh, your family should And that, that comes to Indiana law as to who would get your assets if you left no planning or if you had no planning in place at all? Exactly. Okay. Indiana in the 1850s wrote the first probate code on how to handle intestate administration of assets. If you don't have a will, it, it goes this way, okay. some to your spouse, some to your kids, some to your parents if you don't have a spouse or if mm -hmm. you don't have kids, some to your uh, nieces and nephews if <laughs> everybody else is in there. It may go to the children you don't want to have it. It may right. go to, uh, uh, but it can't, cannot go to any charities, any anybody other than a family member except for the state of Indiana if there's nobody else in the process. Interesting. So the probate process just provides for the judge to make sure that what is supposed to happen, happens. If there's a question, if there's a complaint, the judge is involved. If you're in a trust, if you're in a non-probate asset mm -hmm. uh, arrangement, you may not have a way to get that uh, asset to the person you wanted it to go to. Very good points here, Ted. <clears throat> um, at what point would I contact Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins and talk to you about probate? Is it I have an elderly parent or grandparent or relative that is going to be passing and we know that that will happen within the next few years. Do I contact you then? Do I wait upon death? Who's contacting you and when and when does, when does your firm really get involved with probate? Mm -hmm. Normally we receive a phone call within a day or two of the death of a, of a parent I or see. a spouse or a loved one or somebody that you have been given responsibility over. Okay. Uh, normally, we talk to the person that's named as the personal representative or the executor. Uh, sometimes we simply hear from somebody in the family, you know, that person died. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they have a will. Right. I don't know who's supposed to step up and take care of something, but I want to be sure that something's taken care of. Right. And we'll begin the process with them at that point and move forward. Excellent. And. Uh, if you call about uh, uh, somebody in your family and they're a client of ours, we probably won't talk to you because sure. we're not going to involve you in their estate planning right. unless they've brought you in or right. invited. They brought you in as the executor or whatnot. Well, and say. invited us to talk to you. Okay. Yes, we, we would need their permission before Excellent. we would talk to you about here's what mom or dad's uh, uh, burial plans are right. or where they're 
uh, and there are limits on who you can talk to. I mean, oh, you, very much you, so. you want to keep the privacy to those clients and to those individuals that have set things up with you. Right. But maybe their attorney, in fact, if they've done yeah. a power of attorney. So. Very interesting. Well, um, some good things. Probate. Um, it's a necessary part of law in Indiana and everywhere, quite mm -hmm. frankly. It, it's an important process, and that's all it is. It's another tool, but it's the tool that, that the government set up, the court system set up to say, when you need somebody to oversee, to make sure things happen the way they are, that's why we've elected a judge, that's why we've set up the court process, to make sure everything's taken care of. Excellent. It's not a big bugaboo. Right. Excellent. Well, a big word that uh, I think we all have a better understanding of now here. Um, again, you're watching the Legal Minute here at Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins on RTC TV4. We've got Ted Wagoner with us. Thank you very much. Anything else about probate today? Nothing more about probate. Our okay. office is at 125 East 10th Street here in Rochester. Our phone number is 574-223-4292. And anybody who answers the phone will be glad to set you up an appointment. Excellent. Well, Peterson, Wagner, Perkins, another gem right here in Fulton County. Stop by and see them. You've got the website and information up on the screen. Thanks again for your time. Thank you, Scott.